Can I ask you today, uh, maybe some of you here, I just try to be sensitive to what God wants me to say and do. And Is your heart troubled this morning? We know that John tells us in chapter 14 that you know, he's gone to prepare a place for us. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I wouldn't tell you this. But can I tell you today, God wants to comfort your heart. And He wants the fear to be gone that's tormenting you. That nobody knows about, maybe, but just you. Nobody else knows. It's just something you struggle with personally that you're scared to let out, maybe. And God sees it and says, let my word comfort you. I care about you. I've gone to prepare a place and surely I'm going to come and get you. And you're going to be with me. Don't let this enemy bring fear. Don't think that there's something you can do to solve the problem. Whatever the problem is, take it to the Master. He's the problem solver. He'll work in you and He'll work in the situation as well. And He can do what we cannot do. He can see what we cannot see. I just wanted to share that for whoever it is. Just trust Him. Trust God. Quit trusting in you and what you can do. But trust in the God of the Bible that leads us, that guides us, that teaches us. And there's many running around today with no comfort in their lives. No comfort. They're tormenting themselves because everything they're doing, they're trying to do in their own strength, in their own wisdom. And you can't get much done that way. You can get something done, but it won't be God. It'll be you. And that's all you'll get out of it is you. Some more you to solve one problem, creating another problem. Instead of men of God learning how they did of old to get on their face and seek the face of the living God, to be changed by the power of His presence, to know what the peace of God is that passes all understanding. But people don't have time to stop and get before the throne of heaven and come into that holy place and pour your heart out and know what God has to say to you, to you, not to everybody else, but to you and to me. He's that personal. Do you think somebody's taking advantage of you? Do you think somebody's getting away with something in this life? Can I tell you they're not? There isn't nobody sharp enough to get away from the eye of God. David said if he made his bed in hell, God would be there. Let me tell you something, nobody can hide from him. And nobody does anything without his eye catching it. And you know, I have this picture in my head of people that have rejected God and one day going to stand before the judgment seat and be damned forever that God's going to pull up their whole life history and all their fornications and adulteries and thieveries and lies. And he's going to tell them, this is why I'm sending you here, because this is what you chose to do to follow your God, the devil. And this is the influence that you chose to be under, not the people of God and not the house of God. And you're going to reap the reward of what you've sown because wages of sin is death and separation from God. And many there are going to be that go in there because of their choices and think their conniving mind is the answer of all things. And they're going to make it and they're going to be successful and they're going to do this and they never find contentment in life and everything is another love, another running after something of this world and they've not learned to be comforted by the living God and by the Word of God and being changed by the power of His presence. Can I tell you the power of God will change you The power of God will change you. The power of God will take away that thing that binds you and set you free and set your feet dancing. I'm going to talk a little bit about today what I kind of had on my heart as I sought the Lord is the rapture of the church. The church mainly is what I want to talk about, but 
the rapture of the church and some of the darkness that we're dealing with that people go to and fro every day and they never take time to think about this and they're just kind of running their, their race and, and kind of oblivious to things. And I know in, uh, well, let me, let me turn over there. And uh, I had a few things I jotted down. If you guys have your Bibles, you know, or a paper, a pen, or anything, that's fine. And the thing of it is, is I feel, I feel personally that we are living in the last days. I honestly feel that with all my heart. And I wish I could express it to you in a greater way, but I can't. And I feel like the Lord's been preparing me personally for His soon return. And I'm finding comfort in the Word of God to be able to go home to be with the Lord because I want to be with Him. And you know, you see it in Scripture where they wanted to be with the Lord. Paul talked about it. He said, it's needful that I stay, but I would rather be with Jesus. I would rather be with the Lord, but today people would rather be here because this is their home. They're not a pilgrim anymore. They're an earth dweller. And everything that life's about is here. Whatever the fancies of this life have, that's what we're about. And that's what you see a lot in the house of God and in different things as I watch and as I listen and as as I see the preachers of today, the amusement of preaching and the uh, enjoyment where the crowds and the masses sit around and and they have a story like, I'm going to church or we had church this morning. Beloved, we are the church. We are the church. Are we living like the church that's ready to meet Christ? Are we living in a way that this world doesn't have us tied to it? But we're waiting for that blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Are we waiting on it? Are you ready to go today? Titus 2.13. We're to be looking for that blessed hope. Are you looking for Jesus today? Am I looking for Jesus today? Do I want to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye? Do I want to hear that come up hither? Do I want to go be with Him? Many don't realize the day that we're living in. They don't realize the hour that we're living in. I believe that time of Jacob's trouble is not too far away. I believe the 70 weeks of Daniel is about to take place that week. I believe that seven years of tribulation is coming on us. Not too long. I believe the church is going out, and I believe there's enough Scripture to to support pre-tribulation leaving here. If you look at all the things that's happening, you look at the way the church is laid out, you look at the catching away of the church, you look at the tribulation period, you look at the Lord coming back at the end of that, you look at the millennial reign, you look at all those things and the way they laid out, you, can, you see scripturally how all this fits. And many are not even looking at the Word of God. They're like Jeremiah 6.10. They're dull of hearing. They basically have no delight in the Word of God anymore. You can't get them to come out to church. The pastor, or whoever the teacher is, has got to preach something that's so enjoyable that they're tiptoeing and, you know, and so excited or they're totally amused by what the guy had to say, and they don't realize that they are the church. You and I are the church, the body, that's going to go and be with the Lord. Are you ready? Are you comforting others with Jesus is getting ready to come? Are you comforting others with Jesus is getting ready to come? Are you sharing your faith Is there a burning flame within your heart and within my heart? Or is there just trouble and turmoil from this life in your heart? Is it just one thing after another? Is it just pain in this life? Is it misery? What is it? Are we excited about Jesus Christ? Are we excited about going and being with the Lord? Are we ready to shed this body and take on a a new body? You know, when Jesus was resurrected, And he came out of that grave. His body came out. And we're going to have bodies, beloved. We're not going to be floating around on some cloud. But we're going to be busy serving Jesus in the millennium kingdom. In the millennial kingdom, we're going to be serving. And you know what? 
the rewards that you and I take with us, not, not our salvation, your salvation, I'll be clear. God gives it. Jesus paid the price for it, and we can't add a penny to it. But you know what? We have works that's going to follow us in. And as the talents were given out, one day we're going to stand before Him and what we did with the talents that God gave us and the call of God on our life, what did we do with it? Did we run from the call of God? Maybe we didn't want to do it, but we were willing to say, I don't care if I make a fool of myself. I'm going to get up there and I'm going to do it because that's what God says to do. That's where we got to be. We got to fall in love with Jesus again as we watch this world continuing to get wickeder and wickeder, it seems, as, as you see the things in this nation that I see, the change in society in so many ways. The love of God has grown so cold that people are doing all kinds of crazy, perverted things now that you thought you wouldn't see. And I look at my grandkids today and I wonder, should the Lord tarry, what is this place really going to be like? Is it just going to be a place where it's nothing but devils, nothing but wickedness? And are you willing and am I willing to be that city that's set up on a hill? Are you willing to be that light of God to shine and say, you can kill me if you want, but by God's grace, I'm going to continue to stand. I'm not going to let this marriage thing destroy my walk with God. I'm not going to let this lust thing destroy my walk with God. But I am keeping Jesus Christ first. I'm going to love Him more than my wife. I'm going to love Him more than my husband. I'm going to love Him more than my kids because He's the very life that's in me. And He is the one to give me life. And He is the one that will keep me from that second death. And one day the Lord's going to have to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. You never lived for me. You never gave your life to me. I ran after you and you continually rejected me. You continually rejected everything I had to say. You always live for yourself. And that's where the world is, beloved. And it's influencing the church. We're eagerly waiting for Him. We know that He's coming. How many people today have you comforted with the Word of God that Jesus is coming soon? Get ready. How many people have you shared the Word of God with? Have you helped disciple? Have I helped disciple? That when I stand before God, He's going to say, enter into the joy of the Lord, be thou over ten cities or whatever. We see that principle in the Scriptures. And can I tell you, there's going to be those serving in the millennial reign. And then from there, we'll go into the eternal state. And what have we done here that God would give us something to do in the millennial reign? What have we done here? Have we spent our life on ourselves? Have we spent our time and our energies on all the things of this life, the people of this life? Or have we separated ourselves to God and God alone and says, Lord, it's you or nothing else. It's you or it's nothing else. It's you and only you. And the joy that I have will be because of you and not because of things. Because can I tell you, your money's going to perish. Everything in this life is going to perish, but what you take we as the lives you've affected, the way you've lived your life. Have you been an example to others? Wife, have you been an example to your husband? Husbands, have you been an example to your wife? Have you lived a godly life and said, I'm going to serve Him. No matter what, I am going to serve God because He is the one that set me free from the power of darkness in my life when chains were holding me down. He came and loved me when nobody else did. When I was unlovely, when I was in my vile condition, He came and ran to me. He said, I'll take care of Him. Whatever else you owe Him, I'll give you the money. Put Him up. I'll take care of Him. I'm the Good Samaritan. I'll come back for Him. I'll check on Him. I'll take care of Him. That's what God will do for you and do for me. You don't need a big house. You don't need all the things in this life. You don't need all the everything that the world prides itself on, their accomplishments, their achieving. Because God is not awed by any of that. What God is concerned about is a man's soul, is a man's life. 
is the way that man lives his life and sows into the next generation that preaches Jesus Christ is coming back, that understands the Great Commission, that Jesus died for humanity, that man could be saved through Him. If man would preach it, God uses men. And if men don't do it, the work doesn't get done. Can God step in? Yes, He can. But God uses men. He adds to the church as He sees fit, but He uses men that are sold out to Him that can share the truth with somebody else to keep them out of that place where the wages of sin bring them and destroys them. In the end, I can hear the cries of people saying, I wish somebody would have been for real with me. I wish somebody wouldn't have had some candy-coated message, but they would have actually told me the truth of what the Bible says and didn't care if I didn't like them. How many people do you think one day are going to be lost that we could have had an impact on, but because we could were concerned about how they were going to respond to us, we didn't say anything. And we let them go their way knowing all the time that they were headed to a place of destruction. Knowing all the time they're going to the devil's hell. If there's not a change, that person is going to be lost. If there's not a change in that person's life, they're going to be lost. And God, the just God, is going to show them why they're there. When they stand before that great white throne, He's going to show them, I believe in a moment, He's going to show them every sin in their life and show them, now I'm not talking about the, the uh, Dima Seed of Christ. I'm talking about those that are already damned. They're already judged. And they're before the great white throne. And he's going to show them, this is, this is where I come across your path. This is where I touched you. This is where I sent somebody to you and you rejected it. This is the guy I put you with and you left him. This is the lady I put you with and you left her. You didn't have nothing but just lust within you. And you could never satisfy the craving that you had for the opposite sex or whatever else it is. And you did not fear me. And you will answer for it. Your wages will be upon you. And what I'm saying is probably foreign to a lot of people. People probably think I'm crazy, you know. But I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. I don't, I, I'm not adding anything to it. The Word of God is the Word of God. It speaks for itself. You know, one thing I, I was thinking about is the preachers of today and the sadness of much preaching that you see out there today is because people are coming by the masses and they look at this small crowd and think God's not in there. Well, you know what? Don't weigh things by what you see. Don't weigh them by what you see. Because there will be masses at these places where people are telling them everything they want to hear. And you got to be able to see that. And I have got to be able to see that. When you're amused with the preaching of the gospel, when you're just getting everything answered and everything, your, your ship's coming in, it's right around the corner, man, you're going to be wealthy, and God has a blessing for you, it's just going to run over and knock you down, and man, you're going you're to have this, and you're going to have that, and everything's about this life. It's about what kind of success you can be in this life. Is that in the Bible? Is that in the Bible? What about Jesus? Did he walk around with like a million dollar suit on or something? Did he have gold chains hanging all off of him? He preached something that he knew he needed to preach. He had a message. And I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father except by me. He knew that. But the preaching today, I want to ask you a question and you judge. Do you feel like the saints of God are being equipped, equipped for the work of the ministry? Service, should I say. Have you been equipped to go out and work in the service? I'm not talking about earning your salvation. I'm just talking about, well, let's go to it. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3. We'll go to that one first. Let me see where I'm at. So I had a couple of scriptures I kind of got out of sync. Second Timothy. Let me make sure I got my ducks in a row here, guys. 
53, 16, and 17. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Some says service. Are, you, are the people in church today, do you feel that the house of God overall is being equipped? Do you feel like they're getting reproof? They're getting correction. They're getting instruction. They're getting doctrine. They're being taught. They're growing in grace. They're able to rightly divide the Word of God. They know what their position is. They know what their call is before God. And they are committed to doing whatever it is that God has for each individual to be doing. And I can tell you one thing God has for every one of us to be doing, and every one of us have at least one gift, and that's to preach this gospel and to follow the Great Commission. To preach this gospel, Matthew 28, 18 18 through 20, are we preaching the gospel? And you know what? Because there's such a great apostasy in the church today, because people want to just have their ears tickled, It's going to be harder for you and me to preach this gospel. But can I tell you, don't be ashamed of the message of the Bible because you're going to be mocked. You're going to be hated. I'm going to be hated. People are not going to like you. You're not going to be real popular. When you tell somebody, hey, that's not that's not the gospel. That's another gospel. That's not the gospel of the Bible. That's not the God of the Bible that will change you. And you see people take a couple of little scriptures and put in their own little thing the way they want to turn it and say what they want to say. And it's not the Word of God. And the sad part of it is the people in the congregation are not being equipped. They're not being equipped to know the Word of God. Can I tell you today, you better go as deep as you can in the Word of God. You better dig down deep into the Word of God because trouble's on the horizon. Trouble is all around us. Wickedness is all around us. And I know people will just look at me and say, hey, that's just an old guy talking. He don't know a thing about what he's saying. But can I tell you, it's coming. It's coming. Jesus is coming soon, and many is not going to be ready for him. Because they're going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. They're not going to hear what you have to say. The dullness and the deafness has set in to many today that they no longer hear the Word of God. They no longer have a delight in it. Why do I know that? Because they have no hunger for prayer. They have no hunger for reading their Bibles anymore. They have no hunger for fellowshipping with the saints. They don't feel that sense of safety in the house of God with the man of God over them. The shepherd that's leading them and guiding them. If you feel safety and you know that you're growing, you're going to want to attend. Because you're going to have that sense of safety that the man of God is not a hireling. And what he's telling you is the truth. And if you're wise, you'll obey it. And if you're not wise, you'll suffer loss. And that's where the church is today. Everybody's out there on their own. They're not in any house anywhere gathering with the saints. They're doing their own thing, living their own life. They have no sense of safety in their life. No sense of safety. Can I say the man of God is everything? We know Jesus is the great shepherd. But there are men of God that are established. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. And they have a job to do. They've been gifted by God to do a task, if you want to call it that. It's the call of God on their life. And when you find it, and you find men of God that are for real, and they're not up here just to get some kind of, you know, um, whatever, you know, that they get some kind of respect, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, but they're for real because they know that they're going to give account to God for everything that they do. This is a calling here that you don't want to get in it unless you study in the Word of God and teaching people and taking time and teaching the Word of God and requiring the Word of God to a degree. And this is truth. This is reproof. Know what reproof will do for you? It shows me where I'm wrong. Has anybody ever showed you where you're wrong? Or would you just be offended and walk out the door and I ain't never coming back there? What does correction do? 
It shows me how to get right. It shows me how to get right. Are we using the Word of God, the teaching? Is it profitable to us? The Word of God is not going to be profitable to you and to me if we don't receive it. If we think, I don't have to receive that. You look at it historically. You look at the early church. They knew who their leaders were. They knew who those servant leaders was. They set the example. And they respected the men of God. They wanted to be around the, the people of God. They wanted to be around their leaders. They found that sense of comfort, that sense of safety, knowing that the guy was for real. He wasn't there to try to pick through the flock and grab one of the women. He wasn't there for the money that people could throw into the pot. But he was there because his heart and his calling was there. And he knew what he needed to do. And he was doing it with all his might, with all his vigor, with all his strength. He was preaching the truth. He was warning men to flee the wrath of God. It's coming on a nation that hates God. And can I tell you, it's not far from this nation. I don't know how it's going to all come out in the wash, but I'm telling you, this nation is in serious trouble. This nation is in serious trouble in every way. And something's coming for this nation. I don't know where it's going to be or where it's going to go. I believe the Trump's going to sound and I'm going to go up. And I believe if you are smart and you are wise and you're hearing the voice of God speak, that you will prepare yourself, you'll prepare your house, that you'll prepare your kids. The husband will be standing in the gap seeking the face of God for his family. The wife will be trusting in the husband as the leader of that home. And he'll put all the foolishness away. And he'll be sincere. Yeah, you occupy till he comes. You enjoy the things you can enjoy. But you have your mind and your heart fixed on one thing and one thing only. I want to make it. I want my family to make it. I want to be victorious in my walk. I want to triumph over the enemy. And I want to preach this gospel another day. I want to share this gospel because if you get right, God will begin to use you. If I get right, God will begin to use me. The Scriptures are still alive. The Scriptures are still alive. I can tell you God is still delivering men from unclean spirits. God is still setting men free, setting them free. He's still touching hearts. He's still changing lives. He's still putting homes back together. He's still doing what man and doctor can't do. God is still on His throne. But I believe our days are numbered here to a degree in this nation. I believe it is with all my heart. The wickedness that's abounding, no respect for God in any way, the perversion that's all around us in the, in the church house and everywhere we go in government, everything we do, this perversion is just thrust in your face. No different in Lot's day almost. You're running around doing everything they want to do and answering to no man. And the church is cowering and bowing before it like never before. And they want to give you a little bit of this medicine that's not the Word of God. It's a piece of it, but only a piece. Only a piece. There's plenty of cold hearts out there, and there's some that you know and I know that their hearts have turned stone cold to God. And you may be the one to preach this message of hope out of purity of heart and being for real and knowing your Bible. I think the most discouraging thing is people not knowing their Bible. They followed some preacher. They've never dug down deep in the Word of God for themselves. They don't know the Word of God. They don't take time. If they take five minutes, they feel like they've done God's service. Man, I gave him five minutes today. We have got to get back to the basics of the Word of God. We're living in the last days. We're living in the time of the great apostasy. We're living where many are gathering in the house of God that hearts are not for God. They are gathering there, and they're gathering there for a message of feel good. They are not the church. They're coming to church. They're going to church, but they are not the church. And that's where we got to be able to discern the difference. That's where we got to get to because Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? Am I ready? If He comes today, are you comforted by... If I told you Jesus is coming at 4 o'clock today, 
Would your heart be excited? Would you be overwhelmed with joy? Would you be, praise God, I've been waiting on this. I am ready. You know what? If you're cornerly minded, fear is going to come up on you. If you're naturally minded, you're not going to be wanting that. You're going to be saying, hold off. Give me another day. Give me another day. Let me get right. I thought I was right, but now that you're coming, I realize I'm not really right. It's going to be a sad day one day when the Lord shows Himself and people are revealed for who and what they really are and those that thought they'd been able to hide some little something. And God, yeah, God will tell them, I got you. You thought you were doing this, but I'm doing this. Nobody's getting away with nothing, beloved. The wages of sin is death, and every man that's doing it is going to face death. Unless you've come under the blood of Jesus Christ, you've put your faith, you've put your trust in Him, you quit playing games, you quit running with the world, you quit trying to be entertained by friends and people at work, and you love your husband, you love your wife, your focus is biblical, and that's all you're concerned about. That's all you're concerned about. Are you persuading men today? Am I persuading men? Are we fulfilling this great commission? I know that many preachers are not fulfilling the call of God on their life because I can tell by what they're preaching when I sit and hear it. I just sat and heard something uh, last week and I realized, man, that sounds good. I want to get up and get excited about this. But then I realized, hey, man, you're talking to my flesh. I could jump and dance on that one. Yeah, because everybody wants to hear good things. Everybody wants to be amused. Everybody wants to be told how great they are. Everybody wants to be told a million dollars is around the corner. Just run around and get it. And the foolishness of Christians not even knowing the difference. And people that won't gather for the house of God. People that don't find a sense of safety there no more. They don't find that safety in the man of God leading and they're out there on their own running to and fro, and Daddy's leading them down a road of destruction because there's nobody in their life speaking to that family. There's no proof, reproof. There's no correction. There's no instruction. And you got the long ranger out there that knows nothing about the Bible going to lead them off to a place they don't want to go. And others have no concern if they did, they'd tell them. They would at least put you in the wind, innuendo there or something. They would have something to say. Where are we at as a people? And I'm not talking about just this congregation here. I hope you guys see that. But it's as a whole. As a whole, where are we at? Are you ready? My question is, are you comforted today by Jesus getting ready to come back? And I know I'm hitting on that a lot, but I feel it so real within me. So real, I want to talk a little bit about the darkness here. A little bit about the darkness, because I think a lot of times we as a people don't really see it. You know, in the fall, when, when Satan was cast down to the earth, there wasn't only Satan that came down, but there was a whole host that came down with him. And you see it clearly when you read the Gospels. When you see Jesus walking, you see the man in the tombs that's been chained. You see Mary Magdalene, whom seven devils were cast out of. You see different ones bound, a little boy falling into the fire. You see so many different things that you and I, if we look at that, we know that there's many unclean spirits in the earth realm. What did Job say when, when, God, when, God, when uh, Satan come up before God? In the book of Job, he said, I've been walking to and fro in the earth. We have an enemy out here that if you're not praying and you're not building yourself up, it's a gravitational pull. You're going to go back to sin because sin is in your members. Demonic power is all around us. I don't care if you can't see them. They're there. And if you look through your Bible and you have faith in God and you look at your Bible, you can go all through the New Testament, even the Old Testament believers. You could see where they knew there was a devil. They knew that there was demonic power. You could see things. And for some reason today, especially in our nation, people don't believe that. They, 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 they kind of say, yeah, but they don't really believe it. And you look at people that's committed massive murders and are cold as steel in the wintertime in the snow. 
There is nothing in them that has any kind of remorse. And that's where our nation's going. And that's where the hardness of heart has come to the things of God. And that's why before long they'll kill you and think they're doing God's service. And can I tell you, if they're hugging you, you're probably not living the right gospel. Because they're going to hate God's people. Which means they're going to love them less. You're not going to get that position you thought you were going to get, maybe. Something may happen in your life and you not be all this to them. You know? But the church has got to wake up and get ready. And all this, uh, all this hogwash preaching out there, all this stuff that's just filthy rags, all this stuff that's not changing a man's heart, is going to all go into the pit one day because it's not the gospel. And a lot of the people going to see it is because they don't want to get right with God. They just want to feel good. They just want to know they got some fire insurance by chance. But they want no relationship with the living God where they'll surrender their heart to Him. And that's where the church is at. And that's what we got to get away from. Prepare. If I can tell you anything else today, prepare to meet your God. They're going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. It's going to be just like it was in the days of Lot. And God's going to say, that's enough. Put some fire on them. Now, I'm just, that's just my version, but you understand what I'm saying. God, when he has enough, it's going to be enough. And he's going to have enough. And he's going to have something to say about it because he created it. And he has no problem grabbing Satan, just telling the archangel, go get him and throw him over here in the pit and chain him up. God can do whatever he wants to do. He rules and reigns and he asks nobody. And every person will answer to him, even the devil himself. Can I tell you, are you ready? Am I ready? I'm going to give you all some scriptures because I've kind of looked over it. But I started with Titus 2.13, Philippians 3.20, eagerly waiting for the Lord. I'm just kind of going back over a little bit. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. Are you ready to be caught up? Are you comforted? How do we look at the church? Is the gifts of God doing what they're called to do? Is those ministry gifts fulfilling their call? If you're in a church and they're not preaching a pure doctrine, get out of it. Get in one that'll preach the Word of God, that'll step on your toes, that'll reprove you, that'll correct you, that'll love you, that'll hug you, that'll weep with you, and rejoice with you. Don't look for somebody, and we're not looking for some kind of leader that has absolute control. We're looking for a servant leader. We don't need no one that's like, I'm the man. No, you're not the man. The man is over you. You're the underman. Amen? And we need to get with God's program and do it God's way and have the blessings of God on our life. And we'll want to show up at the house of God. We'll sense the safety. We'll sense the fellowship. We'll sense the need to be there. We'll sense we all have a gift of some type. Are we using it? When we stand before him and give account on that day and he tells him, okay, you, you enter into the joy of the Lord. You was wise. You took what I gave you and you used it. God's not giving you this stuff so you can hoard it and hide it and put it in the dirt. You've been gifted and called and I've been gifted and called and I may not want to do it in my flesh, but my spirit says, I want to honor you, Father. I may look like Forrest Gump, but I want to get up there and honor you. I want to do what's right because I know that I'm rushing before the throne of the living God and I'm going to give an account for my life, the way I lived it, the example I was. Did I have truth in me? Did I tell people the truth? Did I love you more than everybody else? And was I ready to meet you? And was I longing for your coming? Was I comforted by the words of Scripture? Or was my heart troubled? Was I running from you? And I'll go on here. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 talks about the Scriptures being profitable. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is a great commission. The entire body is involved in the great commission. The entire body. Everyone is to be working in whatever sphere you, you're in. Wherever you go to work at. I'm kind of of this mindset and the way I see the gospel is every day when you get up and you go to work, that's your mission field. Every day, whatever you're doing, those people that you're close to, you're not trying to be the hot dog on the job or the best one on the job. You're trying to represent Jesus Christ and know He sent you there and that money He's giving you is because He's blessing you because He sent you there. 
Are you doing what God sent you to that job to do? Does anybody know you're a Christian? Does anybody know you're serious about being a Christian? Does anybody know you study the Word of God? You pray. You believe in laying hands and seeing people healed. You believe in people being delivered from demonic power. You believe in people getting a new heart, being changed by the power of Jesus Christ. The drugs fall off. The whoredoms fall off. Everything changes. The chains come off. You're now free. That's what I experienced. That's what I experienced. That's why I know it's for today. I was bound by demonic power and Jesus set me free. Thank God for a man of God that is willing to do the Word of God or I'd still be bound in my chains. And can I tell you, there's many out there today, even in the house of God, that are bound in chains of darkness. And it's going to take a man of God to see him set free and not somebody that's running talking a good game. Somebody that's actually spending time with the Lord, seeking His face, knowing His Word, and have a heart for the field. They can see the field is white. They can see that, hey, it's day. We can work while there's still a little daylight. Let's get busy about Father's business. Let's see the house of God grow because people are coming in wanting Christ, wanting to serve God, wanting to be free of their sins wanting to do everything they can to serve the Master, wanting to preach this message uncompromisingly. That's where we got to go, beloved. This is not a game. And we see in Hebrews 11.33, and I'm going to finish up with this. By faith they conquered. They conquered kingdoms, beloved. Performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, and shut the mouths of lions. Can I tell you? There's a lion trying to get you today. Are you going to pick up a sword? Are you going to stand there and tremble? Are you going to get up and fight to the end? Are you going to quit right here and fall over and cry out, I can't do it? Are you going to hide your talent in the dirt? Are you going to get your talent out and clean it off and get about Father's business? What are we going to do with what God has given us? What He's blessed you with today? Can I tell you? He can take those blessings away. He can turn, he can turn things around in a minute. Don't take those blessings to yourself and think you're something because you're not. And I'm not. God can pull those blessings. He knows how the money to take wings and go away. He can take it away. He can give it too. But He can take it away. What are we doing Are we serious about serving God? And this is a message the Lord gave me, and I know the Lord gave it to me. Because sometimes God will give you something, and it will kind of trouble your heart, because you'll be like, you know, Lord, I don't really want to have to say all that, but, you know, I'm your servant, and I want to be obedient. I want to share what you have me to, to share. I want to do what you have me to do. Because I am a love slave and a bond servant of Jesus Christ, I will do what you want me to do because I love you, because I know no man set me free from the chains that held me. When you run at the end of love, because people love you conditionally, but God loves you unconditionally. And in my state of depravity, God loved me unconditionally. But others will put conditions on you. And God has run after you and touched your life. What are you doing now? Are you running after Him? Are you, are you shining a light in a dark world when people see you coming, all they see is a blaze of light? That's what we're about. We're not about being best friends with everybody on the job and having our little corporate family and loving each other and calling each other and whining and dining each other. We're about the cross. No, no, guys, I appreciate you, but I'm not about that. Oh, let's build a better family. Come on, we can all serve the devil better. We can all get out there and drink some booze and carry on and run around and and, uh, carouse and live like the heathen. Come on. Everybody does it. Do it. Yeah, and that's the very thing that's going to be your destruction and your demise. Sometimes your blessings can turn into a curse. And many of them in this nation has. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we love you today, Lord God. We thank you for the word you've brought to us as a people, Lord, as you've challenged my heart. 
Father, I ask you that no person will leave here without the hand of God truly being upon them. And when they leave here today, this thing will richly be within each one. And they'll sense whatever area is just like me, what we need to change. Because we're living in the last hour. The trump's going to sound and we're going to go up. The trump is going to sound and we're, we're going to go up. Are you ready? Don't be duped by someone else that laughs about it, that jokes about it, that kids about it. This is truth. And this is God speaking to us. Will we obey? Will we obey what God is saying to us? This may be your last time God speaks something to you. Are you willing to hear it? The next time you might be standing before His throne. The next time you may be seeing God. Because your life may be over. Are you living it in such a way that what you leave behind, people have a good word to say about you? They love God. And they did not deny His name. But they served Him with every ounce of energy they had. Yeah, they lived life. They enjoyed life. They realized that God had given these blessings. But the blessings never overran them to where it separated them from their Master. And that's the difference, beloved. And Father, we thank You for that today. In the name of Jesus, as Your people go with You and come back tonight, Father, whatever You have for us, we want to thank You for the opportunities we have. In Jesus' name. Amen.